everyone understands when we talk about blending different styles or blending different managers together, what that means in the context of active equity managers. Most clients have a reasonably good view around these managers are strong value managers. These particular asset managers are strong momentum or trending managers. And these asset managers are quality investment managers. However, when we start talking about how do we blend into this thinking, index funds and smart beta funds, things start to get a little bit more gray. So let me start with a quick unpack and a quick reminder of exactly what is a smart beta fund. And to better understand it, let's compare it to what a market index fund actually means. Your market index fund is usually very simple to understand. It's your classic buy the market quickly. So you're buying an SA equity fund where the benchmark is CapSwix or the benchmark is all share, for example. Your smart beta fund though, tries to do something a little bit differently. Here it's trying to capture a particular style, a particular risk premium, predictably and consistently through different equity market cycles. They also go by so many different names just to confuse us even more. Smart beta, scientific beta, factor-based investing, and probably my personal favorite, advanced beta. The styles we're gonna be talking about this morning are styles around value, styles around momentum as a particular equity style, and quality. And at the end of this presentation, my real hope is that you'll have a better feeling to how do you go back and test whether your equity portfolio can actually be smarter. How can smart beta funds help in that process? And what unique characteristics can they bring to how your equity portfolio will behave? The styles we built out at Momentum were effectively the Momentum equity style. Now you can imagine the naming challenge this brought to us because had we launched a fund called the Momentum Momentum Equity Fund, it would have sounded like we lost our way. So we called this particular smart beta fund the Momentum Trending Equity Fund. The second style was value. And those are the two particular smart beta funds that we launched first. And we launched them about three and a half years ago now. And together with our third style, which is the actual quality style, in our view, those are the three styles that one needs to think about and test whether they are incorporated into your equity portfolio. Yes, the philosophy does change as one moves from one style to the next. So on a momentum style, the real underlying philosophy is, well, the market trend is your friend. Let your profits run. Cut your losses early. In a value style, the underlying philosophy would be buy low, sell high. Look for shares that are out of kilter with their long-term averages because of some market event or some market news. And of course, avoid the value trap at all cost. But the real magic in smart beta funds in particular starts when one looks at the process used to implement each of those funds. And in the case of our smart beta funds, once you've gone through the process of any one of the funds, which is a well-documented, systematic, and a very rigorous process, once you understand the process behind any one of our smart beta funds, it's exactly the same process in all three smart beta funds, just with a different criteria around how we screen shares for them to earn their place in our portfolio. Execution really does matter in any equity fund. It certainly matters in active equity managers, and it matters even more when one talks about index funds and smart beta funds, because every basis point counts. So it's very important for clients to clearly understand how do managers execute? How do they actually go about execution and face off to market? This really is one asset class where experience does count. If you haven't managed client money through a proper crash, 2008, 2000, and even 2020 now for that matter, you still have a lot to learn. And I would be the first one to put on the table that you do have the potential for the market to get away from us here. If you look at the S&P 500, for example, so 500 shares on the US stock market, when I last checked, there were more than 700 different smart beta funds on those 500 shares. I think that's having taken it a little bit too far. So what do we need in our SA equity building block to give us an SA equity fund that has the maximum chance of success, the maximum chance of delivering based on how the market unfolds going forward. And for us, it's all around, you need a blend of different things in that SA equity fund. The first one is going to be a blend of different styles. 2020 has been a very unique year. 
a once in a lifetime year, or at least I certainly hope once in my lifetime year. And everyone would clearly articulate and be able to recognize that if you only had one style in your SA equity fund, my word, have you had a bumpy ride in the last eight months. The second event is effectively one around timing. And again, I'm often asked, Wayne, can I add value to my SA equity fund by trying to time styles, trying to time when to go into value and out of quality, when to overweight momentum and underweight value for argument's sake? Personally, I've yet to see any evidence of consistently being able to add value in your equity portfolio by trying to time your entry and exit from equity styles. You're far better served, in our view, by just making sure that your SA equity fund incorporates as many different styles as possible to give it the best chance of giving you the best result on a forward-looking basis. It's generally not that difficult then to convince clients of the merits of those first two points. And if you then think about how do you actually execute on that, historically, we would have executed by, for argument's sake, blending in two different value active managers and one or two different trending managers and two quality managers all in active space. But I've also seen some really bad examples of blending where clients have thought they were well diversified, but they actually blended between three active managers, but they're all value. Well diversified by manager, but clearly not well diversified by style. And the real benefit that smart beta funds now bring to clients is that you can incorporate them into your equity portfolios and get very clean access to a particular style or risk premium that might be missing in your portfolio. The most obvious benefit clients typically see in smart beta funds is price. And yes, the price of a smart beta fund is generally less than its actively managed alternative. But the real magic in smart beta funds comes in how they behave and the characteristics that they can bring to your SA equity portfolio. So let's have a look on the next slide. Um, what happened on the All Z40 in 2000? And if you look at the graph, you can see it was pretty flat most of last year, bouncing along, and then February happened. And boy, oh boy, did it happen. And if you ever wondered, ever, what a V-shaped equity market recovery looked like, the SA market gave us a textbook definition and a picture of what a V-shaped equity market recovery looks like. And you can see during February, March, the stock market in the case of the home index of our, um, the like JSC Aussie 40, our Aussie 40 index was down 34% in around 30 days. Absolutely unbelievable. And then recovered sharply to have fully recovered by the end of August. I'm also often asked, Wayne, do you think 2020 was worse than 2008? For sure it was. In January 2008, I just joined a multinational bank sitting on the trading floor, and I felt like I had a front row seat to watch the world go into meltdown. But 2008 was a slow burn. The market burned slowly during the whole year, hitting rock bottom around end of August, early September, when Lehman's filed for bankruptcy. But in 2020, the equity market went down nearly as much, but not in eight months. We got there in 30 days. It was vicious. I think what's important in this graph is it also shows you that, yes, had you bought the All Z40 um, fund or a particular All Z40 SA index fund, yes, you would have fully recovered. But what it masks behind that is that in this particular equity benchmark, you would be sitting with more than 50% of your portfolio, so more than 50% of your life savings in five shares. I'm not convinced that is too smart for an SA equity block. I personally far prefer cap swings, where we cap the exposure to all the shares at not exposure more than 10%. The challenge for us and with our clients is that cap swings has underperformed the all Z40 in the last probably three to five years, but I still think it's a better index for SA equity funds on a risk adjusted basis. The other challenge we had, if we look at the next slide, was the non-symmetrical market recovery in 2020. How your equity fund performed is very much a function of where was your SA equity manager invested. What we're showing on the graph here, if you look at the blue line, the blue line shows the fortunes had your fund been overweight SA financials or had you only been in an SA financial fund. And you can see that SA financials got hammered. Banks, insurance companies have really been under immense pressure as a consequence of COVID. Hardly surprising. There's just a lot of noise, a lot of uncertainty, and lots of market provisions being raised on those companies' balance sheets. So if you're in that particular type of fund or if you're overweight financials, 
you way down from where you started at the beginning of the year and you haven't even come close to making your money back. In the green line, we're showing what happened to SA Industrials. And there you can see, yes, you've pretty much made your money back from where you were early January. The challenge though, it's not a broad based industrial story. It's largely a story around NASPAS and process. And the real star in the last eight months has been our resource sector. Also hardly surprising if you look at gold having touched on 2000 US dollars at one stage, this sector has been flying. And if your fund was overweight resources, you really have performed well. But you quickly start to see that your fortunes would have been very different depending on where you were in the market and depending on where your asset manager was, never mind by style, but in terms of the actual sector allocation that your manager actually had. And to be honest, I don't think I've seen the range of equity returns between fund managers as wide as what it currently is. If I look in the three-year space, the range between your best equity manager on a three-year rolling basis and your worst equity manager is around about 24% per annum. If I look at the year to date, the range between your best equity manager and your worst equity manager is 45%. Never has it been more important for clients to consider what is in their SA equity portfolio and to check that it's smart. Smart on benchmark, smart on styles, and smart on being well diversified between different managers, active and passive. On the next slide, we have a look at how has one of our momentum smart beta funds performed? And this is the momentum trending equity smart beta fund. And you just can't do a presentation like this without having at least one slide where you brag about how well one of your own funds has performed. And this is that slide. So what we're showing here, if you look at the red graph, how that's fared over the last three and a half years, we're showing what your money would have looked like had you invested three and a half years ago in the capped SWEX SA index. First thing you see, well, I would have had a negative return for three and a half years on a total return basis had I invested in an equity fund that was tracking the capped SWEX index. The momentum trending equity smart beta index fund is shown in blue, and you can see it's had a spectacular result. In fact, it's outperformed the market by 41% since it was launched three and a half years ago. And that's running with significant funds in the portfolio, not a proof of concept fund. It's got a meaningful asset base in that portfolio and it really has done the job. That outperformance, ladies and gentlemen, is a momentum smart beta fund. Not an actively managed fund, but just as smart. So what do we think about when we think about building out an SA equity portfolio and checking to see if it's as robust as what we can possibly make it? Will it capture different equity styles? For us, the first question is, is the portfolio exposed to all of the right equity strategies? Or are we missing a particular strategy in our fund at the moment? So you might have a look at your portfolio and said, listen, I've got well diversified between different momentum managers and value managers, but I've got no quality at all in this portfolio. So that's the first one, that point that we would ask clients to seriously start having a look at. The second question is just getting some sort of appreciation at what is driving returns? What helps you explain different equity returns that are actually materializing in clients' portfolios? What are those risk premiums? And we did a lot of work over the years and a few years ago, and we realized at that stage that if we had our core equity managers and we just had the two extra styles of value and momentum, or as we call it, trending, we could explain the vast majority of fund returns and we had created an equity portfolio that was diverse and behaved well through many different types of market cycles. We then did some work after that and we then realized, listen, our thinking is now sort of matured slightly. We also believe now that you can bring in quality as an additional style into your SA equity portfolio. And the benefit of that is that you get one extra layer of market diversification and you get some more explaining power to what's actually happening in terms of your portfolio risk. What is really interesting to me is that low vol has not featured in this particular construct. And I'm certainly not advocating that there's no place for low vol in your SA equity fund. What I am saying though, is that if you have an equity fund that already has a mix of risk and managers between core, value, momentum, and quality, I'm not convinced that low vol is going to add anything, anything significant to how that equity fund will behave. The million dollar question I then get from many clients is this, and that sounds fantastic and I'm all in, but how do I go about implementing this and testing this in my own portfolio? And for us, I think it's 
Very much. And it's an important point to mention is that how one goes about this is it's as much an art as it is a science, but it's a journey. It's a journey around understanding different behavior, different risk appetites, what are clients actually looking for? And for us, some of the questions that we would normally be asking is, what is your return objective? What is your bullseye that you're looking for here? So you're looking for cap swings plus 2% over rolling three years for argument's sake. What's your risk target? So if you miss, how much are you willing to miss by? Are you happy to miss by 5%? Happy to miss by 10? Where is your risk budget actually set? The third level is your market constraints. What are your constraints that we're going to put in place to get to the top of the staircase? So the constraints might be no factor may have more than 30% exposure in the portfolio. No factor can have less than 10%. But what are your constraints that you're looking to solve for? What's your benchmark? What are the hurdle rates that we need to factor in here? What benchmark? What term? And finally, it's always a process around making sure is having those core managers in the portfolio, is it adding value or is it taking away from value and taking away from the market behavior of this SA equity fund? But hopefully what becomes obvious in this conversation is that there really is a lot that we can do to make our SA equity portfolio smarter. Not just smarter by diversifying between different styles, but also smarter by diversifying between active managers and passive or smart beta as part of that process. The next theme I'd like to quickly touch on is this whole theme around responsible investing. And how does it play out? What does it actually mean to us? And what's vitally important is for us as investment managers who have a lot of client money that we are investing in companies, in projects, we really have the ability to make a significant difference in the companies and the projects that we choose to invest in, but equally so by the companies and projects that we choose not to invest in. And clients, and rightfully so, more than ever are asking us, how do you incorporate ESG, environmental impact, social and governance into your investment management process? So what does it actually mean to be responsible about how you go about investing? The first lever effectively is what is the environmental impact of how you are investing? So the companies we're buying, the projects we invest in, what impact are those companies having on the environment and how they actually behave in our economy? The second point to consider is the whole issue around social impact. So by building up the shopping mall, what difference does it have on the ground? How does it participate in actually uplifting communities? What is the social impact of where we are placing client funds? And finally, the equally important question around governance. What is the governance culture? What is the approach to governance of the companies that we invest in? So let me give you a really simple example. Within this particular lens, within this framework of ESG, if I told you, would you rather invest in a company that is creating lots of jobs, making a huge difference on the ground at grassroots level, or would you invest in a company that is a massive market pollutant? In this particular framework, we'd all agree, I think I'd go for the first one. Here's the challenge. If I now tell you it's the same company, it's Sassel, you then start to realize, listen, I can't just try and do something ad hoc and treat ESG responsibly. It has to be incorporated into everything that I do. And in our passive and smart beta funds, we try not to exclude shares from our process. We try very much to hold shares that will give our clients the best possible outcome, but we do so in a way that we can be responsible and we can demonstrate responsible investing. So let me give you a real example here of what played out. And this is really not a pick on BHP moment, but it's just a share that I think tells the story. What happened? There was an AGM where BHP tabled a particular resolution where there was a, a sort of resolution around cultural heritage protection in mining areas and some climatic resolutions. And there, were, there was a request for BHP to resign from certain industry bodies. What was the ESG risk and our response? Well, for us, it was a disregard of material, societal, and climatic issues. What was the result? We voted in favor of protecting cultural heritage sites and against withdrawing from the industry bodies. It just makes more sense for companies to engage. The result, well, this resolution was not passed and the company actually agreed with most of the facts that were tabled. The big point that this shows to me is that you can still focus as an investment management company on buying shares that get the best possible result for you, our clients, but still do so in a way that we invest responsibly. Thanks for your time 
this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping you've picked up a few interesting points and a few things that you can consider to go and test how smart your SA equity portfolio is. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day with us.